Forgive those that have come against you. But you can pray anywhere. An altar is wherever you bow your heart before God. An altar can be out in the back seat of a taxi cab. It can be in your front seat of an automobile. An altar is wherever you bow your heart to God and you start praying to God in the name of Jesus. He hears you and you don't have to be in church to be saved. You don't have to be anywhere to be saved except in the presence of the Holy Ghost, in the presence of Almighty God. Because when God gives, when He starts knocking on your heart's door, I don't care where you're at. If He's knocking on your heart's door, you're going to pull that car over. You're going to get down on your knees or you're going to bow your heart before God and you're going to let God know that you're sorry. Why? Because he's going to reveal to you that hell is real. There comes a time in our lives when the Holy Ghost reveals to us if you don't repent and come out of your sins, you're going to burn in a devil's hell. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church. It doesn't matter how long you praise God. You've been reading your Bible. It doesn't matter how many songs you've sung in the choir. It doesn't matter how many sermons you've preached. It doesn't matter, church. It's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about being born born again and having the blood of the Lamb applied to our sins. Uh, that day, when the, in the day of Passover, they had to have the blood applied to their, their doorpost and over the lintel. And he said, if the blood is there, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. And that's the same way it is today. When you stand before the Lord, if the blood has not been applied, praise God, he's not going to pass over. He's going to say, depart from me. And there's going to be a lot of people. He says, Straight is the gate and narrow is the way for those, hallelujah, that are going to enter in. And there's going to be few of them that make it in. But broad is the way, hallelujah, wide is the gate and broad is the way for those that leads to destruction. And there's going to be a lot of people going down that road. There's going to be a lot of people, praise God, walking right off into hell. I had a picture, an illustration up here one day. I had a young girl that went to church here, paint it for us or draw it for us. And it showed the two gates. It showed how many were going off the wide way uh, and they were just falling off into a lake of fire but the others hallelujah there's a few of them going up to glory and that's the way it's going to be in the last days that's the way it's going to be in the last days a lot of people are playing games with God now. The preachers are more interested in the bill folds. Their preachers are more interested in how many is in, sitting in the congregation. There's been more people left this church and go to most churches around here but when they left they had the knowledge of the blood of the Lamb. They can't say I didn't hear. They can't say I didn't know. Because you see, you're God's congregation. You're not my congregation. Some of you may leave here today and never come back. That's all right. I want you to be where God wants you to be. But I want you to know one thing. If the blood's not applied, you're going to hell. If you're not born again and your name's not written in the Lamb's book of life, you're going to hell. And you can play games all you want to with God, but God doesn't play. He does not play. And, you know, this is something that a lot of people don't like hearing. And that's what I was telling you a few minutes ago. This sermon is not only for you, but it's for me. I have to live by what the Word says also. But it's not really it's just for you and me only. It's for that one sitting in front of the television right there in their house. So you can't even fathom, you can't even imagine how many thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions around the world that can see what I'm saying right now. You can't even imagine. And you cannot, you can't even think about how many are being pierced in their hearts today. You can't, you can't imagine how many thousands upon thousands are being touched in their heart. They're hearing it for the first time that they have to be born again. Usually when they go to church, uh, the pastor says, listen, uh, I want to know how much you're going to dedicate to the church this year. How much tithes are you going to pay this year? How many visits are you going to make this year? They want to know everything. They want you to write it down. Uh, and they, they give you a little pamphlet when they come through the door. This is what I'm going to preach on today. Uh, this is the sermon right here. And I want you to follow these scriptures. Uh, let me tell you something. I've been preaching 25 years uh, and I've never prepared a sermon yet. Uh, I read some scriptures scripture and God tells me what to say uh, he speaks through my heart uh, and he says whatever you hear in your ear you speak it hallelujah and that's exactly what I do uh, and I'm telling you today that you don't go out uh, and you don't serve man uh, and you don't serve anything on this earth uh, you don't have any other gods before God Jehovah and you step up hallelujah in front of the, the congregation and you tell them exactly what God's told you to tell them and it doesn't matter if they like you if they don't like you they throw stones. That's why we got a bucket of rocks sitting right here. 
is to remind the congregation, don't throw no rocks at me, and I won't throw any at you. We're all sinners saved by grace. And we're all sinners saved by grace. You, you, I, I put on my pants the same way you do, one leg at a time. And, and that's the only way I know how to put them on. I've seen some commercials where they lay that back on the bed and they try to put their pants on because it's a skin tight. They try to slide into them. But let me tell you something. I'm telling you that we're all humans. We're, every one of us are human beings, and God knows that. He knows our hearts, and he knows everything about us. And that's why we have to pray. He says, pray without ceasing. Pray always. Pray for one another. Jesus, listen to what he said, what Paul says over in Timothy. Paul's writing to Timothy in chapter 2, verse 8. He says, I will therefore, 1 Timothy 2 and 8, he says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Not only in church, pray everywhere. Pray at your house. Pray in your car. Pray at Walmart. Pray at Kmart. Pray at uh, Roses. Pray at the grocery store, food line, no matter where you are. Paul says, Timothy, I, would that, I will that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. My goodness, you get run out of some churches here in Moore County. An amen or hallelujah and a lifted hand, will, they'll escort you to the door. You get in some of these churches. You may think I'm kidding, but I've had members here that say it. They can go to a store, go to a church, and they'll sit there and say hallelujah or, or raise a hand, or amen. And the first thing they know, ushers over there saying, "Well, you're going to have to leave." Isn't that something? Isn't that something? That's, that's terrible. But you know, Paul says in the Word, and over writing the Corinthians in chapter 14, he says, uh, "Forbid not to speak in tongues. It's a gift that God gives, but people don't want to hear it." They don't want to hear what the Word says. They want to hear how God's going to bless them. God's not going to bless anybody that doesn't study the Word and know the Word and, and put that Word in the heart. He says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. He doesn't want you to doubt, doesn't want me to doubt. He doesn't want any of us to doubt. Many of you joining by television right now, I don't know where you're at, what you're doing. But if you've got sin in your life, and except you be born again and repent, you're going straight to hell. I'm not judging, I'm just warning you. And if you know that you've got sin there and you want to repent, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I come before you today. I have sin in my life. And I'm asking you, Father, to place my sins under the blood of Jesus. For I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and you raised him from the dead. This moment I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to be my Savior and be Lord of my life. And I'm asking you, Father, to write my name in the Lamb's book of life and seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it in your heart, dial the number on the screen. It's toll free. We'd love to send you two books. One is Welcome to Your New Beginning. The other one is The Gospel According to St. John. And it's, uh, it's a book of John, and it's a King James Version. But pray for this ministry always. Support us when you can. And remember that Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you.